Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. Today on Figure Friday, I'm going to be showing off the other two Bravo 6 kits that we got in stock last week. There's the Greedy Pig and Thumper Power. They are both U.S. infantry in Vietnam, as you come to expect from Bravo 6. But these are really cool kits because they're uh, the other two members of the Rumble in the Jungle theme that Bravo 6 has been cultivating. So the original kit was released in 2012, I believe, and it's it's just two US infantry running after a bunch of VC, or communists, and uh, they're really great, and they fit into the narrative that I assumed for these figures, and I'm gonna go over that throughout the course of the video, so please bear with me. Um, I'm gonna start by talking about the Greedy Pig, because I picture this setting off the narrative. So, the Pig was the M60 light machine gun. They used it as the base of fire weapon for US infantry and marine forces in Vietnam. And they call it a Greedy Pig because of the amount of ammunition that they'd fire through it in a firefight. It, as the base of fire, it was the main weapon that they'd use to suppress and kill communist forces. And so, the kit depicts a single gunner. He's laying down prone, firing on an enemy position. And the figures are really great. They've got, Bravo 6 has done something really special. They've molded the hands onto the weapon and they're molded on in a really, so obviously you get a really positive fit with the arms and the, the whole figure comes together really well when the hands are molded on. But They've also cut out a little bit of an indentation for where he's laying his cheek on the stock of the gun. And so there's that. There's all the equipment. They're all still in patrol equipment, obviously. They haven't had a chance to, like, take off all their marching gear because they're still just... They're all stunned from the contact and they're all just sort of jumping in and trying to return fire. So his mate, the ammo bearer, is... He's just running, and he's got this really cool pose. He's on both knees, like he's just like he's just seen the contact. He's just gotten to run up beside his mate, and he's just yanking all the ammunition off of his back and trying to throw it down beside the gun, so that when the machine gunner runs out of belt, he can connect the next one into the chamber. Or if they had a chance, they'd like link the belts together as a continuous stream of bullets and the mate has a really really cool detail on him he's got on his side uh, the it looks like an oven mitt but it's a heat resistant glove for detaching and taking off spent or overheating m60 barrels like when obviously when uh, you they'd fire so many shots through this gun at one point in the firefight that it would become so hot that it you know might burst or warp or uh, foul the shot inside the barrel in some way. So that's obviously dangerous. So he's got he's actually got a, a spare barrel assembly that he's got sort of hooked in on his gear on his back, and and that's a really cool detail by itself. But, yeah, so he's got that detail and all the figures in all these kits have a unifying factor. Since they're U.S. Army Infantry, they've all got this load-bearing system on their backs. It's, uh, it's like a metallic loop or an oval kind of thing that conforms to your back, sort of. And on that loop, there's fabric straps that they just hook on their backpacks and they'd hook in and loop in uh, spare ammunition tins and bedrolls or uh, probably not bedrolls but more like ponchos and things like that raincoats and stuff like that so it'd be in a center line load bearing thing that would help them carry more stuff when they're marching so they've all got that which is actually a lot of detail both of these kits are like overflowing with resin there is a lot of resin in these kits and which is always good there is a lot of extra little value details as well like exposed canteens like just they're they aren't in the fabric pouches like they typically are in bravo 6 kits which is 
which is neat just because, I mean, that's extra stuff. I don't think they have any actual purpose on these figures themselves. They're just sort of a bonus piece, which I like, obviously. Both of these kits do come with uh, transfer sheets as well, if you're wondering, for uh, unit markings and uh, like name tags and rank and stuff like that, if you're looking to put those on. So uh, I'll talk about Thumper Power now, just briefly. And within that narrative of the contact, like I mentioned how the M60 Gunner would get in contact. If he's not the point man, he would be close to the point man and he'd lay down and then start suppressing the enemy and his ammo bearer runs up to him. The thumper power, there's the guy with the M79, he's like, he's in this really kinetic pose and he's just knelt down. He's taking the knee to steady his aim on the grenade launcher. And so he's, I picture him running up on either side of the M60 gunner and he's just starting to lay down fire to help buy everyone else in the unit enough time to fan out on either side and form a line so that they can start shooting back. And so his mate though is what I really like about Thumper Power. The guy, he's got his hand on his helmet like he's, he's so, so flustered and uh, stunned by the contact that he's just trying desperately to get up with the rest of the people and he's trying to keep his helmet on his head because the ammo bearer for the M60 gunner has actually lost his helmet. And so uh, he's trying to get in there and he's got a really neat weapon. I've talked about these before, but it's just this really cool 1960s intermediary design. It was, it, I don't think it's called an M203, but it is a uh, like-minded design. It's an M16 with an organically housed under barrel 40 millimeter grenade launcher and the barrel jacket for the rifle isn't the standard M16 barrel jacket, like the furniture that like conforms to your hand in that really sort of <clears throat> black rifle design. This one's more cylindrical and it's just got some air vents to keep the barrel relatively cool when firing. So yeah, that's a really neat weapon and both the fighters in this in Thumper Power have various, they've got different ways of carrying the 40 millimeter ammunition. The guy with the M79's got his ammunition draped across his chest in two bandoliers and it's, they're, they're really cool. I always like bandoliers because I think they're sort of a, a really, uh, well they're a basic way of carrying ammunition but it's a really functional way and I think they look really neat because the fabric is all like it's weighted where the ammunition is pushing down on the fabric and they conform to his body really well and they're all molded on to his torso so it looks really really positive. The guy with the M16 who's running has a flak jacket and then on the flak jacket there's inserts where he's put little groupings of 40 millimeter rounds so it's like an early version of a K-Pok but it, there's less ammunition on it obviously. So <clears throat> all these figures contribute to a really positive and really like kinetic focused vignette because they'd all be looking in the same direction. They're all fanning out and all acting in a coordinated fashion. I can picture that and uh, that's how I'm going to be building up my group anyway. So for all these figures and many, many more, be sure to check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com. I'll put the link in the description below as always. If you're looking for better pictures of these figures and all the other ones that we stock, check us out on Pinterest. I've got a whole bunch of boards set up there that you can just flip through. And uh, Facebook is your best bet for more consistent updates. If you've got any questions for me, be sure to send me a personal message on Facebook. I do answer all inquiries that aren't spam, obviously. Um, <clears throat> Or you can contact me either through the High Caliber <clears throat> web address or through my personal email, the phone. There's lots of ways to contact me if one doesn't happen to work for you for whatever reason. So stick around for a few seconds. I'm going to be showing some of the out-of-the-box detail that I just mentioned on these figures. So thanks. Bye. So here I just wanted to show off the definition on some of the figures and some of the details I was talking about. This is of course the M79 gunner 
and I wanted to show his bandoliers mainly the definition and the sharpness on all the detail on this figure is damn near perfect in my opinion as you can see ammunition has a lot of weight to it hangs really naturally yeah love that so as I was mentioning the load bearing equipment that they carry on their backs as you can see there's the metallic frame that it's on all the utility bags on the top the spare 308 tin that I mentioned is right there in the back bedroll probably a poncho here the standard issue infantry backpack at the bottom and then there's indentations for extra canteens stuff like that on the sides yeah wow and something that's really important to note is that on all the figures they've got specific indentations on their backs that make the fit really positive for the backpack gear here on his side you can see the mitten it's like an oven mitten or something like that used for replacing the barrels his like <laughs> stunned face there yeah really like these figures the main gunner here i wanted to show this figure off to show you the casting block and some people have uh, an aversion to using figures that have casting blocks especially if you're coming fresh off of practice with injection molded figures and you're just used to using things like that these casting blocks are actually not really difficult at all to remove as long as you've got a bit of patience i use a it's a saw that is like a wire strung up between two points and it goes through resin like butter so you've actually got to worry about not moving up into the figure rather than it taking too long yeah more amazing detail you can see the indentation on the side of his face where his cheek meets the gun really beautiful um last thing I wanted to show you is just some of the basic equipment that these figures come with. Here is some of the grenades and that exposed canteen that I was talking about, along with two sheathed canteens for use on the webbing. Really great detail. So, thanks very much for watching again. Bye-bye.